What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Angry Spud. In today's Spud Reacts, we are heading back to Sweden with Three Star Vegabond for his second part of Things You Do Not Want To Do When You Are In Sweden. So without further ado, let's dive in. You want to visit Sweden, but you don't want to make a fool of yourself. I'm back to tell you 10 more unwritten rules about things you shouldn't do in Sweden. Oh, putting it on the Ritz. That's what that song is. In my is. last video about things not to do in Sweden, I covered everything from buying rounds, or not buying rounds rather, to how to stand on escalators. But I still see hordes of tourists behaving inappropriately when visiting Stockholm. It's not because they didn't worry. watch your videos. I put together a second list of things you shouldn't do in Sweden. Just follow these simple steps and you'll be fine. Let's start with a simple one. How to get on and off public transport. I really shouldn't have to talk about this one. This should be so glaringly obvious that no one <laughs> makes this mistake, but it still happens every day. When you're getting on a bus or getting on the subway, you don't rush to get on immediately. You let others get off first. It's not really rocket science, is it? Step one, you stand to the side so you leave room for people getting off. Step two, you don't get on while people are getting off. Step three, now you get on one person at a time in a well-formed line. How can this be so difficult for some people? So I want to say I agree with this. However, most people probably, <clears throat> for one, they're selfish. That's just how it is. And then two, there's a lot of places that if you do not shove your way in, you are not getting on and it will take off without you. I, I just think that's probably what's going through most people's minds, but it's probably the first one. They're just more so selfish and they don't want to be patient. Yeah, I would say. I blame tourists and people from rural areas and egotistical Stockholm people as well. Basically, I blame people in general. People are horrible. You can't live with them and I'd prefer to live without them. This guy's definitely helped. Imagine Butter. that you're meeting a new person for the first time, or maybe you're starting a new job and it's time to introduce yourself to a colleague. You put on a smile and stretch out your hand in a greeting, and then you say, how are you? Things suddenly take a strange turn when the other person tells you about his divorce and that his kids now hate him and that he's a recovering alcoholic and things are really rough right now. You just made a mistake of asking a Swede how he's doing. Swedes Ooh. aren't very good at small talk, and that's very noticeable in how they often interpret questions literally. Many Swedes don't understand the difference between how are you as a greeting and being asked how they're actually doing. We're simply not very used to talking to random people, especially not in English. We like to pretend that we know English, but most of us struggle when it comes to catching subtleties and nuances, such as knowing what you mean when you say, how are you? Hmm. So what are you supposed to do? Just not talk at all? Yeah, don't be late. So That's you a, have that a date bugs and you're supposed too. to meet up at 6 p.m. What time do you arrive? If you're from the UK or the US, then you might strive to be there at around 6 p.m. to not make them wait. Unless you live in LA because then all bets are off. If you're from Italy or Brazil, then it's anyone's guess. Maybe you'll get there a quarter late or maybe in three hours. But <laughs> if knows? you're a Swede, then you'll arrive at exactly 1800 hours. Not a minute late, not a minute early. Sweden is a punctual country, and you should not play loose when it comes to meeting times. There's actually a theory why some cultures are late and some aren't. It's about whether or not you have a past worldview or a future worldview. And also if your culture is monochronic or polychronic, if you focus on one thing at a time or many things at once. But I just want to say that scene right there where it's like flurries snowing, or it could have been rain, but... And then, um, it probably is, but it looks like it's more so um, a mixture. That just looked remarkable. I, I mean, it's 
most of the time when it's like that, you want to be inside. But I would be outside if that was what the weather was like and that's what the city looked like. That was beautiful. But all of that is just an explanation why some people are late. It's not an excuse because there's never an excuse for being late in Sweden. I agree. Anywhere you go, there's never an excuse. You don't wear shoes indoors in Sweden, like in most civilized countries. It's just a few random places in the world where you do wear shoes inside, like France, England, Ireland, the US, Australia, all of South America. Okay, maybe it's more than just a few random countries, but the fact still remains, in Sweden, you take off your shoes inside. But yeah, I, understand I, I don't if like it's having not shoes super on inside. obvious for a visitor to decide when to take off your shoes and when not to. You don't take off your shoes in stores, for example, or in workplaces. So I've put together a helpful rhyme so that tourists can remember when to wear shoes and when not to. Let's Hotels hear it. and homes and cozy places. Let your toesies show their faces. Bars and shops and public spots. <laughs> Keep your bloody shoes on. What are you, stupid? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Are you going to a house party in Sweden? I sure hope that you're not going empty handed. And I'm not talking about a present for the host or the hostess, even though that's a nice gesture as well. No, I'm talking about bringing a little bag from Systembolaget, the state run alcohol store. It's common practice that you bring your own booze to a Swedish house party and that you drink your own booze. One of the worst for That's pretty in normal. Sweden is to come empty handed to a party and to ask people for drinks. This is especially true for young people. As you get older, you see more and more hosts opening up the liquor cabinet with all the expensive good stuff. But it's still considered extremely bad form to come empty handed to a party. Definitely. You don't want to be that one scumbag <clears throat> who literally doesn't bring their own thing and then they scoop up everybody else's stuff. That's a no-go for sure. You may have heard about the less than stellar immigration situation in Sweden. For decades, we have accepted a lot of immigrants, but we haven't made an effort to integrate them into society at all. Now there's a lot of tension from all sides. There's radical groups of immigrants and radical groups of Swedes, and then a large portion of people who just want to live their normal lives in peace. You might have a lot of questions about all of this. How did we end up like this? What's the tension like? And what are we doing about it? Well, you keep those questions to yourself, because Swedes aren't very comfortable talking about the immigration situation, unless you find a Swede who belongs to a radical left or right-wing party. For some reason, you can't get those people to shut up about anything ever. <laughs> this guy. Or if it's a drunk Swede, that also works. Visiting oh. Sweden is so cool, right? It's the best thing ever. Stockholm is so beautiful and it's so amazing. And I've never seen a place with so many beautiful people. If you sound like that, then you should seriously consider shutting up for a bit. For some reason, many Americans have a tendency to think that everything is the best ever. Every place <laughs> is so magical and so full of amazing history. Sweden is awesome, I agree, but stop being so ridiculously over-enthusiastic about everything when you come here. Sweden hey, some people don't even get to travel ever or get outside of the country, so I think it's pretty cool if maybe that's the only place that they ever go their entire life and it just happened to be Sweden. So you never know. You never know somebody's story. It's are very sparing with praise, so if someone is overflowing with it, it just sounds cheap and fake to a Swede. If everything is the best ever, then nothing is. So if you want to give an enthusiastic that. comment in Sweden, tone it down a bit. If you think that you're on a 5 out of 10 on an enthusiasm level, then we think that you're on 11. Go down to 1 and stay there. Then we'll start to take you seriously. That's funny. That's a really cool store. 
this oh, video barbershop. is full of me complaining about things. And that's very unswedish of me. In Sweden, you shouldn't complain openly about things. You can mutter and make sarcastic comments and hint at things, but not complain openly. France has a lot of riots. The French are used to standing on the barricades, shouting out their disapproval of uh, everything. The Irish can also be pretty vocal, going around with signs saying, done with that sort of thing, and stuff like that. And let's not talk about the Mediterranean. Have you ever tried to argue with an Italian? <laughs> Call man collected is not a term I'd use for an Italian with a grudge. Meanwhile, what does a furious Swede do? Well, a really, really angry Swede will keep quiet and maybe make a fist in his pockets. But you mustn't mm. show people that you're making a fist. That might upset someone. So when you come to Sweden, you can leave your overly emotional complaints at the border and keep it all inside like a proper Swede. Okay, so you keep it all in. Oh, this one's annoying. Being I've a heard slob. about students abroad going to class in sweatpants and ratty old t-shirts. And that's apparently perfectly fine in some countries. <clears throat> the US. <clears throat> I've also heard about some people going into stores, showing off their sweaty man boobs for the whole world to enjoy. <laughs> and what about tourists walking around in ill-designed and ill-fitting clothes? That's also pretty common in some places. Well, in Sweden, we expect some class. Look, I'm the exception to the rule here. I'm usually dressed like a dumpster diver, and I even go to the store in pyjama pants. But most people Piyama? in Sweden make an effort to Pajama? look decent when they go out, no matter if it's work or school or just a corner store. So try not to look like a slob in Sweden. It can be hard, trust me, I know that it's hard, but Swedes appreciate neat and tidy outfits at all times. Interesting. There's one thing you should never do in Sweden, ever. We don't have the death penalty any longer, but there's one thing that makes people reconsider that decision. I'm not talking about making fun of our king. We do that ourselves all the time anyway. <laughs> okay. Burning the Swedish flag? Go on, you can borrow my lighter. Making fun of our food? Yeah, Swedish go for meatballs. it. Swedish We deserve it. The thing that you should never do in Sweden is sit next to someone on public transport. I already mentioned personal space in my previous video about things not to do in Sweden, but I felt that this is such an important thing not to do, so it deserves a spot all of its own. In Sweden, if you sit next to someone, if there's an empty seat anywhere else, then you're viewed as a sociopath. When it comes to how to sit on public transport, there are some social rules that you need to know. First of all, when entering the subway or a bus, you look around to find a seat that's furthest away from everyone else. But once you've made your decision, you don't get up to rebalance the distance. That's the responsibility of the people who arrive after you. Also, if you are forced to sit next to someone because all of the other seats are taken, then you don't get up again if another seat becomes available. That might hmm. give offense to the person you're sitting next to. No, instead, you just have to endure the closeness in silence. And for the love of ABBA, don't ever start talking to a stranger on the bus or the subway. That's just pure psychopath behavior, and you'll end up scaring people. And that's oh, about man. it. That's 10 more things not to do when visiting Sweden. So I just wanted to say the bus thing. I do get that. If there's all these seats open, why would you sit right next to somebody? It's just like when you're parking a car. You'll park in the car and there'll be like hundreds of parking spots. And that one car will freaking park right next to you, which I, I don't understand that at all. And then they'll park crooked. So it's like they're really close to you. I don't understand that at all. So this is pretty interesting, though. I hope you found it interesting and possibly useful as well. So it definitely made sense to me. A lot of them were pretty common, um, same as in America, but there are a lot of things that people do there that are not acceptable at all. It sounded like this guy was a little bit upset with uh, some of the tourists that might've been there. So I don't know what his experience was, but uh, he definitely wanted to make sure you don't do these things in Sweden. All right, guys, that's all I have for this video. So I'll catch you in the next one.